So every week or in every video, I like to give a shout out to one of my subscribers and I have chosen the name. But this story is so important that I want to get through it first. So don't go nowhere. I'm definitely going to tell you who I'm going to do a shout out to. His name was Okudili Ndiwe, aka Deriko or Deriwa Mama, and he was from Aguleri in Anambara State. He was born and raised in the streets. He became a pickpocket and later joined a dangerous gang in Anambara. People who met him still get nightmares from that encounter. At a point, traders couldn't display their goods anymore because of him. Banks went out of business because of him. And of course, they kept robbing them all the time. And the worst part was that everyone knew he was very dangerous, but no one could dare report him to the police. There were rumors that he operated with black magic, which made him disappear and appear. The police was accused of being in his payroll and would gladly give up names of people after him instead. So Derico and his boys would rob different banks in one day and nothing would happen. Derico ruled on each other, and Newi, all these places were not spared. So 22 year old Derico was terror in human flesh and ruled the underworld in the eastern parts of Nigeria. There were also claims that he killed over 125 people, which included the police and civilians, just about anyone. He wasn't just going around killing people though, he was a hired assassin for some rich men who wanted their enemies eliminated. So you're looking at an armed robber, an assassin and just about whatever. So remember, Derico wasn't acting alone, he had boys in his gang too. Uh, the interesting part of all this is that Derico lived in Abuja, but would travel all the way from there to the east to rob businesses and private institutions. This guy didn't care about anyone, not friends or relatives. Anyone who crossed him would get a bullet. For instance, he met a fellow crew called Chejina long before he became popular, and they began robbing places together and sharing their loots. They got along very well and terrorized the community as long as they could and no one questioned them about it. Now, Chejina and uh, Derico were like two peas in a pod. They didn't question each other. They basically did whatever they wanted. However, Chejina felt that Derico was too mean, too brutal and impatient for his liking. So he began withdrawing himself. People died whenever they robbed and Chejina's method wasn't about killing people. He wanted an in and out operation. Uh, he wasn't comfortable with all that was happening. He wanted a smooth and easy operation, but Derrick always reached for the guns. After a long and hard deliberation, Chejina confronted his friend Derrico one evening at their den. He began telling him that he wasn't comfortable with the way he operates. Derrico got, got defensive and called him a weakling and warned him never to bring up that kind of talk around him again. As in, hey, you, we are both criminals, you know. You're not supposed to be telling me what I'm supposed to do. I understand you don't like to shoot people. I understand you're not brutal, but you don't come and tell me how to run my shit. That was exactly what uh, Derrico was telling Chejina. But Chejina insisted on getting his points across because Derrico was already high, he wasn't listening, he was erratic, he was being combative, he was just screaming at the top of his voice. So eventually they got down to it, they started fighting, they threw punches at each other and Derrico pulled out a gun and shot Chejina three times right in front of his voice. With Chejina out of the way, Derrico crowned himself the king of the underworld and called himself the untouchable. Now, by 2001, Derrico became the most haunted criminal in Nigeria. Every police station in the East wanted his head on a platter. The state governor, Chiwake Mbadiniju, couldn't get a good night's sleep because of Derrico. And the federal government didn't consider Derrico a federal headache. So they left the state governor to find a solution. Because Derrico brought many policemen across the state and those who couldn't be bought feared him. So it was a Herculean tax. There was also pressure from the police to the government to do something about this menace called Derrico. So those who couldn't leave town waited for a miracle. So by May of 2001, Anambra Police Command launched a manhunt on Derrico and his boys. But as usual, Derrico escaped. Um, like I said, people, uh, people said that he was using black magic so he would appear here and sometimes he would vanish. When the police come after him, he would walk close to the wall, place his hand and then disappear. So as usual, Derrico vanished and four of his boys were captured. 
Even while his boys were in custody, he continued robbing and killing wherever he went. Just when Mbadinuju was running out of ideas because the governor was tired, he didn't know what to do. The policemen were tired, they were all scared of their lives. They didn't want to put themselves in danger. They were just tired of this man. They, can't, they don't know what to do with him. He, they, the, the, the president was just so close in sending the military to hunt him down. So then uh, the youth in the community formed a vigilante group called Anambra State Vigilante Group to uh, hunt Derico. So you can imagine everyone was after him. So this local vigilante group launched a manhunt on Derico and his boys. They were just as deadly as Derico. And since rumor had it that Derico was using black magic, they too fortified themselves. They were basically so prepared, they wanted to match him fire to fire. Whatever he was bringing, they were coming in, you know, a, a, a lot of it. So uh, they went on to build a terrifying reputation that some people thought was similar to Derico's. So by July 3rd of 2001, something happened. The invisible criminal was finally caught. We don't know how they did it, but they said he was on his way to Onicha from a boat to rob as usual. So the Bakasi boys got a hunch that he was on, you know, he was in that area. They, they drove there and they caught up with him. And when the news broke that the legendary Derico had been captured, oh my God, people were so happy. They jubilated. People were like, oh my God, finally, this man is out of, you know, he, he's... He's finally been caught and the best part is that it's not by the police because the police, you know, are claiming that they can't do anything about him. So there were celebration and jubilation in the streets. When Bakasi boys sped into on each other in their white bus, you know, cruising around, raising dust with Derico tied up like a cow at the back, uh, people were just anxious to see him. Many people haven't seen him before. They wanted to take, you know, catch a glimpse of who this man was. But then the unfortunate thing was that his black magic failed him. So the people roared in surprise and cheers as they saw Bakasi boys dragging Derico out of the, uh, the bus. So in a matter of minutes, crowd grew and then um, traders left their shops to see Derico with their eyes. The Nigerian police ordered the Bakasi boys to release Derico to them for further investigation. But they said, hey, no, we're not going to do that. I mean, you guys had your chance. You tried to catch him. You couldn't. You claimed that you, you know, you couldn't do anything about him. So now we got him, and you expect us to hand him over to you? Like that doesn't make sense. No, we're gonna deal with him in our own way. That was the response the leader of the vigilante group gave to the police. So knowing how Derico operates and the fact that he had some some of the policemen in his pocket, it will, you know, the people suspected that if the vigilante boys hands him over to the police. By tomorrow he will be gone and the police will claim that he escaped or that he was bailed or that they didn't find any evidence of robbery on him. You know how it is, police corruption. So the vigilante boys didn't want to hear that. So they held on to Derico and they wanted to prosecute him right in front of the people, right in that same place he's been committing a lot of crimes. So that same day, as soon as their buses pulled over at Ochanja Market, they began singing and chanting war songs. I don't know if you've seen how Bakasi boys, they wave. They usually just picture them in their either black or red outfit with a bandana around their head. They're waving, brandishing machete or their guns and they're circling and they're singing and chanting so energetic and it's scary because if you're a criminal and they're missed you don't know when your head is gonna fall off so they're bouncing around they're also charged up ready to deal with Derico in front of the people and then they drag Derico out of the bus with his face all swollen and bloody as a result of the beatings he received earlier from when they caught him so the crowd mourned when they saw what Bakasi boys did to Derico you needed to see his body that day and understand the level of torture this guy went through so with Derico on the floor, the vigilante leaders, uh, uh, the vigilante leader, his name was Opompi, raised his hand to calm the crowd before he began addressing them. So Opompi was like, you know, raised his hand and was like, quiet everyone, I have something to say, you know. Uh, uh, we have, if you guys know what our mission is, we, we are only here for justice, nothing more. And we have finally found the guy that has been oppressing us. So... They brought out their microphone and then handed it to Derico to speak. 
uh, Derico was like, I am not a criminal. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I am innocent. You can ask around. Have anyone in the crowd seen me? Have you guys ever seen me robbing? Can anyone accuse me? People were like, well, I mean, everyone said you did it. They were all looking at him suspiciously like, this is not really the time for you to tell us whether you did it or not, you know. The whole world thinks you did it. Why wouldn't it be you? Like, why are you saying you're innocent? There were a lot of doubts in the crowd, but people were just so ex anxious to see him get dealt with. They didn't really care whether he was innocent or whether he was telling the truth or just being silly. So along the line, while he was confessing, he mentioned his uh, friend Chejina. He said he had never killed anyone before, that the only person he killed was Chejina. So people were like, so why are you telling us that you killed someone? You said you've never done anything. I mean, you said you're innocent. Even if you've never robbed before, the fact that you killed someone, you deserve to die. So people were like, no, I mean, why? Who do you think you are? How do you come out here and tell us that you've never robbed before? So then um, he, he asked the crowd again, you know, while still in pain and could barely speak. He's like, can anyone raise their hand and say, yes, I have ever robbed him? I mean, you don't expect anyone in the market. They're still scared of him, even though he was sitting right on the floor. They didn't want to say anything because then you never can tell they could not kill him that day and then he'll come back with his boys and deal with the person. That was how terrified the people were of him. So even if they saw him doing stuff, they would all look the other way. They don't want Derrico and his boys showing up in their homes. So, but, but because he was playing around with his confession, he was not getting straight to the point, the vigilante guys were like, speak up, you have already told us that you did this things. you confessed already, why are you stuttering, why are you beating about the bush, why are you trying to seek pity from the people, you did this, you did that, you robbed this place, you did that, we have seen you, we've seen what you and your boys can do, some of them are in jail, and why are you now lying to the people? He was like, I don't care if I die, but I am not a criminal. I'm not a thief. I've never stolen a thing in my life. And that kind of pissed off the Bakasi boys. We're like, we don't have time for this. We've already arranged how we're going to kill you. So whether you like to confess or you want to beat around the bush, we're not going to sit here and wait. So he was still talking. The Ritko hadn't even finished what he was saying before a machete came across his neck and split his head apart. He said, we'll start rolling on the floor. And people screamed. Oh. It was a horrifying sight as blood was gushing out of his neck and his severed head was already on the floor. People watched on. I mean, no one wanted to miss that. It was just so disgusting to watch. But then, people wanted to go home with the full story that they witnessed the execution of uh, Derico. So they began the war dance again. They were brandishing their machete in the air. They were running around the body of Derico and his severed head on the floor. They were circling it, you know, singing their war song and people were watching in anticipation and the next thing they started butchering his body they started cutting him so deeply you know just cutting him in pieces like a, a piece of meat and then they gathered it they pushed the body to a corner put the head and everything and then they pour gasoline on it and then lit it on fire and then dark smoke called up to the sky those who couldn't stomach the horror left the scene immediately they were all satisfied that terror had come to an end in Anambra. That was how Derico died. Now, on December 2001, just a few months after Derico's death, and when law and order, when peacefulness have been restored in Anambra, people could now sleep and snore. Businesses were doing fine. You know, it, it, um, the Bakasi boys attended an event and they met Governor Mbadinuju. And there was a picture where he was shaking the boys for a job well done. Um, they were, you know, pleased to meet him and he was so happy that finally, what the police couldn't do, the vigilante boys did. So he shook their hands and thanked them very well. So that was how Derico died. So whenever you hear someone say Derico or Deni Mama, just picture this hardened criminal, this bad, dangerous young man. And that was... That was who he was. And there's just so many of them like that in that era. We have the likes of Shina Rambo. We have the likes of Amini. And I'll bring you those stories in no time. But I hope you enjoyed this story. And if you did, 
please hit the subscribe button for more content like this. I tell strange, dark, and mysterious stories. Meanwhile, today's shout out goes to Anna Godswell. I see you, beautiful lady. If you're following me on Twitter, please tag me so I can follow you back. My Twitter handle is at general underscore Oluchi. And lastly, to you viewers, if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Thank you so much for watching and have yourself a good day.